people of paradise i'm shirley and this is linda hi and linda um what have you been up to lately in the hood oh in the hood <laughs> like out of the hood well out of the hood actually uh down Devonport Road, I went to a fabulous gig at Vinyl Destination. Great place. A good turnout too, mm. great uh, crowd down there. Mm. Um, and believe it or not, we all know who was playing. It was your band, the Shirley Birds. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, and look, I just cooked this up this morning. <laughs> Their CD. Shirley, I'll let you talk about that. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, first of all, um, you can get this from Vinyl Destination. I'll start from the beginning so I don't forget. Yeah, it was a great gig. We all oh, enjoyed nice. ourselves, um, obviously. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for turning out to support us. It was great, and um, everybody there for hosting it and everything. Grant Hara was awesome too. He opened up the mic for oh, us. He was yeah, fabulous. absolutely amazing. And you can, I'm sure you can um, find well, you can find Grant out and about and go and look on his Facebook page. He's with um, Swamp Thing, so that's that's a great little band. Um, we just did the night with um, Graham Hardaker. There was Graham Hardaker in the band. He's a great singer. Um, Bruce Rollins was on guitar, Tim Jolian on keyboards, uh, David Thompson, who's a great little bass player, well not so little, he's quite tall, on bass, <laughs> and of course Jeff Nelson on drums. And um, yeah, so um, thanks, thanks for coming along, that was awesome, appreciate that. And I've, I hear that there's something interesting happened, something else, well, in your hood actually. Yes, happened. in my hood, that's right. Well, um, I noticed some cops across the road here, and uh, it looked like a paddy wagon, a cop car, and also an undercover cop car, wow. which was, I uh, let you all know out there, it was a Commodore, and it was sort of steel grey colour, so look out for that, <laughs> if you're speeding up while you rode. Anyway, so I jumped in my car, and I thought, I've got to go to the supermarket, so I drove up the street and blown it down with the BP on the forecourt up there, was about four cop cars, uh, dogs, um, dog handlers, and the um, defender squad. Or is, mm. it, is it armed defenders? I never know, but anyway, mm, you know, yeah, they were. people mm. here. And they were running, or well, walking very quickly across the uh, forecourt towards mm. the tyre shop that's right beside BP with all the you know, armoured mm. gear on and that's guns the BP Summit. Yeah, mm. BP Summit, yes. Should we have a look that's at right. should we, We've got some footage, eh? Yeah, and we've got some footage. Thank should you for reminding me, Shirley. Yes, yeah, so I've got the footage. for ages otherwise. Should we have a look at the footage? It's yeah, quite interesting. Sure. Well, that really was quite interesting, Linda. Yeah. I'm glad you found it interesting. Good. I'm sure our listeners are too. Um, just quickly too, before we move on to our guest of the day, um, I just want to let everybody know that Hangar 18, who, they were a fabulous band, they came recently to Vinyl Destination, and they will be back with Vinyl again. And I'm looking forward to that. It's on the 27th of December, and I'm going to try and make a note to get down there. They've, mm. I've been watching some of these songs. One of these songs, I think it's called Rainy Day, absolutely amazing song you can find it on youtube under hangar 18 so have a look out for that one mm. and um yeah 27th of december down at final destination and in the meantime we're going to go right over now and um we've got liam ryan from the narcs and um, I, I was lucky enough to go and pay him a visit with linda and interview him it's been wicked so here's liam hi liam and uh, welcome to the shirley and linda show Hi Shirley. <laughs> it's really awesome to have you on the show today yeah. in your house, so thanks for asking us around. Oh, it's nice to have you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. lovely, cool. thank you. Yeah. Um, just wondering, just um, really awesome to get to know a little bit more about you. It's funny about you were born, to start oh, off with. I was born in Christchurch. In Christchurch, yeah. I thought you might have been, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Um, how was it like, did you grow up there, obviously? Yeah, I did, and um, I got into music pretty early there. Really. Yep. There was um, there's a school just still running down there called the Christchurch School of Instrumental Music. Oh, okay. And I started playing violin from the time I was about seven till I was about seventeen, I suppose. Yeah. So I was playing in Christchurch youth orchestras and yep. things like that oh, wow. before I kind of flipped over to rock and roll. Yeah. But um, Christchurch was a great town for music. It still is. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Uh, I've heard that actually. Yeah. Now a lot of good bands have come out yep. there, and a lot of great musicians. You know. So um, 
So it's very lucky, really. And yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. It was a beautiful mm. place before the mm. earthquake, mm. you know, all those beautiful mm. parks and gardens yeah. and very aesthetically kind of like uh, creative place, you know. Yeah, yeah. Great, and great culture there. Always great theatre, um, great music, great filmmakers, a whole lot of good yeah. and writers. All that. There was a, a whole scene down there that, yeah. that was pretty strong when I was growing up yeah. through the 70s, 60s, yeah. 70s, and 80s, you know. Oh, awesome. Mm. And of course, um, you started off with the Nux, didn't you, in Christchurch? Uh, well, they, the, 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 band started, the band started off down there. Oh, okay. uh, they became very big down there. Then they moved to Auckland, the right. three of them. Andy and Tony and Steve um, moved to Auckland. And, and I met them there when I was oh, playing okay. actually with the Midge Marsden band. Oh, yeah. In fact, I think I was just doing Midge's sec second album that I'd done with them called 12 Bars from Mars. Yeah. And the Narcs were playing at, at uh, the Esplanade in Devonport. Have you yeah. been to that gig? was a great gig back in, back in the day. But anyway, yeah, well, I ended up kind of hanging with them in the house bar after one of their gigs and we played frisbee until four in the morning and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, and out of that, they asked me to join the band. And so I joined wow. the band in 1984. So they were, had a big profile in Christchurch. Right. They were doing like shows, pulling six, 700 people every Friday night down there. Then they moved to Auckland and that's when I joined them right. in 1984. But they'd been going for about five or six years before I joined them. Oh, so you joined yeah. them in 1984? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. A bit earlier, actually, 1983, I think. 1983, yeah. okay. Mm. Because mm. I don't suppose you remember playing down in Illinois, would have been at the Rutland or something. Yeah, no, I remember the Rutland. Because I used to go, I went down there a couple of times and used to watch you guys. Oh, yeah. No, Back was... in the day, I was, I was the person pogo dancing. <laughs> <laughs> And I used to love that song, um, Over My Head. Oh, yeah. That Over was a my great head. song. Yeah, well, we yeah. still do that. It's kind of a reggae song. I mean, the band was called The Narcs. Yeah. It still is, but it was called The Narcs initially because the three of them uh, were an, an, uh, they, they were a tribute band to the music of, of the uh, of the police, you know, the, uh, the police, is that? Uh, the band police, you mean? The band, the police, yeah. Yeah, 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 yes. Which had a lot of reggae and stuff in it, oh, and okay. scarf. And oh, so oh. The Over My Head was very much kind of a tribute to... Um, the police oh, as a band, so okay. that's where they kind of got their name from. They yeah. were a great kind of reggae band. They well, they were, yeah. Awesome, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so there you go. So I no, I remember playing the Rutland. It was quite a um, quite a grand entrance. I seem to remember. It wasn't it like a grand old hotel? Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. I love those provincial hotels all around to, New Zealand. Yeah, you know? I used to try and sneak in there over age, uh, under age, under age. Over, yeah, over yeah. age now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think actually they are keeping the ages on some places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be too old to get on, that's a sad. But yeah, back then it was it was pretty cool. Um, also, I was going to ask you, oh, the Narcs, the yeah. name the Narcs. How did that come about? Well, it was, Narcs is, uh, is, like, is like a narc. That that came out of the um, that came out of the, the police that connection with the police, okay. and the narc narc you know. Oh, narking on someone. Narking on someone, yeah. Yep, yep. But um, actually, there's I mean, there's oh, been I lots see. of stories around oh, the, the narc's oh, name. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting that um, uh, when we went to release our albums in the states, because we, we did quite well with the first two albums, and they were going to release the band in the states, but the they wouldn't release us over mm. there as the narcs because of the narc. They thought it was narcotics. They had that whole thing, you know, oh, and they didn't like it. So it's funny because a band that, that was big at the time over there was called the Butthole Surfers, and I they wondered how the hell that worked. But anyway, but so a bit like she had, we had to change our name. We were yeah. we were released in Australia as the Great Divide, which was the first oh. name, the name of their first. That was yeah. Yeah, they were going to release mm. us in America as the Great Divide as well, and that that never happened in the end. No. Um, well, we released in nine countries around the world, but there were troubles with the, with the name. In fact, I was held up at the border once when I was going into the States in Hawaii, um, I, uh, and they took me aside and said, "What's this? What's the Norx? What does that stand for?" And I and I was, um, and I put, what did I say? I said it was a National Association of Recording Artists, Composers, and Songwriters (NARCS). Yeah. And actually, from that time on, we put a dot in between of the. Um, the, the names of the narcs. Wow. And when we released it, the uh, the song called um, It's Got To Be Love. Well, if you look at the cover of that, you'll see it's got narcs with a with the dot in between. It was our little joke. <laughs> National Association of Recording Artists, Composers and Songwriters, yeah. <laughs> but the narcs name still happens now and we're out there doing it again. It's quite yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a great band. Mm. Yeah. It must have been pretty awesome because it wasn't in 1984, was that when you won that award? Yeah, um, we, we won. Yeah. Yeah. Start writing the board. Just sitting right up there. <laughs> oh! Can we get a picture of your board? Yeah, I'll go and get it. Oh, great. Let's see, so this is the Tui Award from 1984. Oh, we wow. actually we won four of them, I think, that year. We won for one for best production. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, and so on. But yeah, that that was that was a big year for us. That was with I bet. Heart and Soul. This was the most popular song of the year. 
and um, and then we won. So you all got one each, did you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, you're not, not, not the holder bed, yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I think I've got photos on the wall up there of me oh, accepting the award, all that kind of stuff. But oh, yeah, yeah, it was a big year. Oh, yeah. It made a real difference to how, how, I mean, you know, when you go into music, you're not mm. really doing it to compete with anybody else. No. Um, but when you get awards, it's kind of like recognition that your work so, is so, kind yeah. of being, someone's listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like Yeah, yeah, it was a big year. And I did read that Mike Chan actually managed the band he, at one stage? He or? did, yeah, he did, bef kind of before I was there. Again, the band was operating as a three-piece, and they yeah. had singles before I came along. Yeah. They had no turning back and stay away and um, I think over my head. Um, they were all singles that the, the band had done before I joined. Yeah. Um, and okay. so that's the time, the time that Mike Chum, he was working I think for CBS and he signed the band to CBS. Right. And that's how that connection happened. Yeah. Oh great. Yeah. How, how did you find him to work with? I've never met him. But oh, he's, a, he's, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And, yeah. and as I say, he was he was really managing the band before, or uh, signed them up to CBS before I came along. Yeah. Um, but I've known Mike outside of the Narcs and um, he's a great guy, he done a little, does a lot of great work with mm. songwriting in schools, mm. yeah, which does, I, yeah. I, I did a lot of that too back in the early, yeah. well, late 1900s and, and into the 2000s, I, right, yeah. I was doing a lot yeah. of work in schools okay. and me and him were kind of both on the same path yeah. really. Yeah. He set up Play It Strange, didn't he? That yeah, that's right, in the youth ladies and yeah, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so, um, no, Mike's a great guy. I mean, I think musicians don't get credit for the work they do behind the scenes sometimes. Mm. And Mike's one of those people who does a lot of great right. community work and yeah. work on a national level, you know. Yeah. Really cool. Oh, awesome. Because mm. I, I remember when I was on my TV a long time ago, I, um, I, I, he did actually, I did talk to him once, did I? No, it was the other guy I talked to. No, he sent me a letter, that's right, because I sent him one of my songs, but... I didn't get, it didn't get accepted, and I didn't get an award for the yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he was a lovely guy, he was really nice. Yeah, no, he's yeah. very encouraging. He yeah. was, yeah. yeah. He was very encouraging. Yeah, yeah. And with all his legacy, you know, with Split Ends and then into the Sacred Heart College where um, all those great musicians yeah. like Dave Dolan and all those guys yeah. came from, <coughs> a lot of All Blacks came from that. I mean, it's a very powerful kind of background he had. Oh, exactly. You know, he's a great he was, group of people. Yeah. Mm. He was in Split Ends, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, and I did read also that you were over in Australia. Um, oh, was it Australia? Oh, I don't know, but you've, I'm not sure if it's with the Narcs or I think it was with the Narcs. You opened, you, you shared the stage with um, Queen. Oh, that and was Elton John. The, oh, that was in, in Auckland actually. We, oh, we, we, we opened for both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. opened for both of those. Uh, yeah, both of those shows. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Freddie Mercury and. Um, and Elton John, yeah, backstage with those yeah. guys was pretty insane. Yeah. yeah, we had an amazing time, really, when I think about it. You know. Did you actually get to meet them? And yeah, them? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, like? yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I didn't spend any time with Freddie Mercury, but, um, right. but the other guys in the band did. In fact, they sort of went missing, missing in action <laughs> uh, for a few days with Freddie. He was he oh. partied, partied pretty hard when he was in Auckland. Yeah. Um, but Elton John, yeah, we were backstage and met him briefly, just as he yeah. was moving from his. Um, from his backstage area on to, on to perform, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, he was getting up to all sorts of mischief at the time. I think the English cricket team were there that night. Yeah. Yeah, the clouds of smoke as he walked onto the stage, it was kind of funny <laughs> from backstage. It was pretty amazing. But um, yeah, I mean, I never, we never really got to mingle with the artists. It's often, often like right. that when you're on the same bill. Yeah. You know, you just you go just and do your gig and uh, some people mix in, you know, but um, not so much then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So when it came to the, the Heart and Soul song, which I absolutely love, mm. um, who wrote that? Was it all of you? Was it a collaboration? Was it no, you? it was primarily me and, and Andy, Andy yeah. Dixon, the lead guitarist. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we've got a project that's been ongoing actually called the Ryan Dixon Line. Okay. And we've got four, an EP of four songs out, and we're just working on another four actually. Yeah. Uh, but he and I have written songs all the way through, really, over the last 20, 30 years. Okay. Sort of kept in touch. And, and it, yeah, yeah, it's been good. But no, we, we, we wrote that song at Sandy Bay in the Coromandel, not far from here, actually, um, over one summer. CBS sent us away for 10 days to write an album, basically. And that was the yeah. song that kind of... That, that, I love that song. It's just yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's travelled well, you know. Mm -hmm. I still get to play it um, on gigs that I do, and... Um, among other narc songs and other songs I've written, but yeah, that was a, quite a um, a big moment for us, you know, that yeah. song. Mm, yeah, it's yeah. Awesome song. and it came out of um, a lot of things, but one of them was uh, that band Australian Crawl. Do you know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. had that song about. Um, I mean, I'm forgetting this probably won't be any good on them. 
Nice work in there, look. Australian cool, yeah. Australian. Just that big, lo and, and great southern land, you know, that, those big, oh, yeah, yeah. open, loping yeah. kind of fields. Yeah. And so we try to do something slow with the synthesizers. That was kind of the thing at the right. time, that big string sound yeah. and all that. Very 80s. You know. Yeah. It was very cool, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still, still sounds all right, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, nice yeah. no, She says a freak jump is really necessary. I, I would actually agree with your wife. <laughs> so we're talking with Denise. Denise, hey. from Shebang also. Um, wondering what brought you to drive us fast night. Yeah, we've come down to support Deb and, um, and Pete in their last big hoolie down here. So, you know, because they've been so supportive to live musicians in Tauranga. So, yeah, come down and have a big party for their last show. Awesome. Do you work it out as a band? Do you just kind of sit there and... With the narcs? Yeah, so uh, the narcs again. Yeah, yeah, uh, the narcs. Usually one of us comes with an idea that's pretty well developed. We've all yeah. got our own studios at home, a bit like this. Yeah. And um, so one of us will send an idea that's kind of half-baked, you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. It'll probably have a bass line, drums, um, and, and, and some lyrics and a guitar or something leading, you know, mm. to sort of lead the song off. Yeah. And then we toss the ideas around and we, we'll yeah. maybe remix it in, in my studio and I'll send it over to Andy who lives in Sydney, or in Brisbane these days, he's in Brisbane, and then he'll send the track to Tony in Auckland and we, right. just, keep, we just keep rotating yeah. the song around yeah. and gradually it becomes, um, it forms, you know. Yeah. You sort of say, well, someone will write a bridge and we'll say, we don't actually need a bridge, so we'll mm. skip that out. So you just keep developing, you know. Mm. It's amazing what you can do these days on the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's no, pretty cool. Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much how it works. I mean, there was a time we used to sit, all sit in the same room mm. and work, but we're all living, living in different mm. cities, all got mm. families now, it's much different, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and a lot of the writing was done on the road uh, back in the day. I mean, mm. we did a lot of touring. Yeah. I think in 1984 we did, well, I did about 300 days on the road that year. There's only 365 days in a, in right. a year, but you're on the road yeah. all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, and so you spend a lot of time in touring in vans and you know and yeah. playing and, and doing sound checks and that's the yeah. time that's creative when the band's talking and, mm. and you're working out songs mm. and working out arrangements yeah right mm. oh awesome um what's your favorite song that you've done with the narcs with the narcs yeah um but your own favorite i, I don't know all of them but I no no one. i mean there were some songs that were done on an album that we did late we did an album in 1996 yeah called Push the Boat Out okay. and there are some songs on there. There's a song called Leap of Faith, Leap of Faith. that I really that I really think is okay. pretty strong. Um, but the, yeah, that album is really good. We always thought it was our best album but it was kind of like a, a bit of a hidden treasure. It didn't yeah. really get out there, you know. It was it was done it was done on a small label Hark, um, Grant Hislop in um, oh. in Tauranga. Yeah, yeah, now. I know Grant, um, yeah. But he had a great label called Hark okay. and he very ki kindly helped us record the album. But the band was kind of we we're moving off in different directions. We were having kids, and yeah. the band was kind of moving off. And we didn't it, we didn't push it as hard as we should have. But right. the songs were really great, right. recorded and produced by Zed Brooks, who now is, is in Auckland. But mm. fantastic, fantastic yeah. album, I thought. You know. Yeah. So okay. it's when we really brought the Hammond. I brought the Hammond into the gig, and we really started getting really rootsy and quite yeah. strong. And we and we toured with bands by that stage. We toured with bands like. Um, particularly Midnight Oil and mm. bands like that. And yeah, I saw that too. Actually. Yeah, and yeah. they had a bigger impact, a much bigger impact on us than Elton John or, or, um, okay. or um, you know. What sort of Queen. impact did they have on you? Well, just as people, and you saw how right. a, a band really worked. Okay. I mean, they don't, they didn't drink in the house bar after the gigs. They were straight up into their room practicing their harmonies, you know. Right. And, and of course, um, Peter Garrett. Um, yep. Such a strong political character. He was. So yeah. having breakfast with him in the morning was like some serious, you know, some serious <laughs> shit you were talking about about yeah, the yeah. environment, and yeah. he was uh, active in Greenpeace and things like that. And so that band was very political, and we got a sense that that music was more than music; it was actually yeah. 
a way of getting messages across. Right. So the band kind of stepped up awesome. the game. It was fantastic, yeah. actually. Yeah. I saw them actually in Palmerston North once, yeah. um, the Maroroa. He's an amazing stage presence, that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and good band, too. Yeah, no, well, they just came came through New Zealand last year, and I went down to Christchurch and heard right. them again. Okay. And man, they, they, I, I, in fact, I, at the time I thought this must be the best band in the world. I mean, they, it was just Trump was coming to power, they were playing, and they were so political and just so strong, so melodic, so so punky, but great guitar sounds. I mean, Rob Hurst is an amazing drummer. They are a very, right. very strong and very intelligent band, you know. Yeah. Not to be underestimated. Yeah. yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I mm. could see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, and also, of course, just a long question with the Narcs, because you're probably getting time to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> probably get on to your projects. Um, yeah, the Narcs, I was just wondering, because like, you have got um, some new stuff that you, you guys are still working together now. What's the latest songs that you're doing? Um, well, we did. We re released a song earlier this year, 2018. We re released a song called Summer Hill Stone, mm -hmm. which I, I thought was a great song, actually. Um, Tony came with that idea, and Summer Hill Stone was a, r a brick. That they built houses out of in Christchurch in the 1960s and 70s in the northwest corner of the town. And Tony and I both grew up there. So the song was really just about living in the suburbs and wanting okay. to get out of the suburbs. Oh, that's but interesting. Yeah, no, that was a, that, that's been a really good song and it's yeah. done well for us, you know. And we got out of that, we kind of ended up playing at a couple of festivals and, and the band kind of went back on the road. And, and we've just finished uh, last week, just finished um, mixing down a new single called uh, Not Over. It's Not Over. Which is kind of about the band, really. It's not over, but we're kind oh, of all nice. these years we're still rocking on. You know? yeah. It's also about relationships and a few other things, but <laughs> but it's um but it's good. It's yeah. it's uh, it's good to be working and kind of and the, the best thing is that we're all a bunch of friends, especially me and Andy and Tony. Mm. Um, very strong kind of um, friendship there. You know, yeah. we all look out for each other's kids and and keep in touch as friends. So yeah. that's pretty deep friendship. Goes yeah. along back, back yeah. a long way. Up and it is a beautiful thundery day in the Bay of Plenty today. And um, Linda is downstairs cooking us a lovely brunch. And the smell, and it's beautiful, I can just smell it up here the smell of bacon and eggs, yum. She's making um, a bacon, it's um, a European style bacon, and um, holiday sauce, eggs benedict with um, hash browns, mushrooms, green peppers onions and tomato so it should be really yummy and also I've got my favourite plunger coffee come along that she's making up as well for us. So let's go down now and have a look and see what Linda's up to for brunch. Of course, you were in charge of the Tonga Jazz Society um, for a long time, weren't you? Yeah, well, I, well, I was president of the president. of the Jazz Society. And director, yeah. was that director or something? Yeah, I was artistic. Yeah. Well, I was I, I was festival director for festival the Tonga. Festival director, that was it. Yeah. For the, yeah, for the <laughs> Jazz Festival, and then I did that about nine, two thousand and six, I think, two thousand seven. Then I was artistic director for the next six or seven oh, years, okay. and I'm still kind of involved yeah. in the Tonga right. Jazz Society. I'm not on the committee anymore, but my main gig now is that I'm. Um, I'm the director or manager actually of the uh, National Youth Jazz Competition, which is where all the secondary school kids come in mm. to the jazz festival and they bring their bands and their big bands mm. and their combos. So I'm really interested in developing jazz. I mean, the last mm. job I had in the South Island before I moved up here to Waihi was um, that I was managing the jazz school at CPIT, yep. which is the Polytech down there. Yeah. A very auspicious kind of gig, I couldn't believe it. I was also managing NASDA, which is the National Academy of Singing and Dramatic mm. Arts. So it's the music theatre kids. Mm. I mean, they are, they're amazing, those mm. kids. I mean, they come out of that degree course and they end up on Broadway or, you know, they end up in the West End in London. Yeah. They're, you know, doing the Lion King in Sydney, whatever. They, they're very high level. And similarly, the jazz program down there, mm. just amazing. Just absolutely, like, gobsmacked at the, the level of musicianship coming yeah. out of that. And so there are other jazz programs in Auckland and there's the New Zealand School of Music in, in Wellington. And I work closely with those universities, mm. pulling the judges together, and we get the kids through, you know. And the national awards we've got have been, well, it's the 42nd year, 42nd year this year that we're running the, the, just the youth comp. So I'm very, wow. very involved in that. I'm, I'm very passionate about that, yeah. Yeah, that's 
great. Have you got any, like, uh, I suppose you'd have major, some jazz artists that have influenced you? Oh, What's yeah. Favourite one? What would be your... Oh, probably Herbie Hancock. Okay. Yeah, amazing, amazing um, jazz player. Played with Miles Davis and yeah. and through, but um, and Miles Davis himself. I mean, there's so many. I I, yeah. I, I couldn't even begin to say. Yeah. Um, Marcus Miller, um, Quincy Jones, uh, you know, uh, Jack, Jacko Pistorius. I mean, you could just go mm -hmm. on and on. But probably Herbie. I, I just love his voicing. So I love. I just love his, the way. He, Mm. The way he shapes the songs up, yep. I love the way he collaborates with other people. Mm. I love the fact that he's he's a Buddhist and he kind of he's got a spiritual kind of life, and he's he's also kind of um, kept going. He's, yeah. he's in his he must be in his late seventies or even early eighties now. I don't know, but he's still as hip as hell. Mm. He still plays with you know the mm. best young players mm. coming through. Um, but I try and keep my eye on what's happening with 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 jazz and, and music in general. I mean, I really love the band Snarky Puppy. I don't know if you've heard of them, but no. they are they are all graduates of North State Texas, North Texas State, whatever it is, mm -hmm. a bit of, of jazz programs in in uh, in, in America, and uh, they are basically a cooperative of about a, a cooperative of, of about forty musicians, and right. they they just go on the road. They're touring all mm -hmm. the time. They tour yeah. like three hundred sixty five days of the year. Right. When the guitarist has had enough, they bring yeah. another guitarist in. And they came through the Wellington Jazz Festival last year. They were they just amazing. I mean, check out their track Lingus, okay, Lingus. on on, <coughs> on um, online. I think you'll be absolutely amazed at the band, the level that these young players are at yeah. now. It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. frightening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. I remember once going to see some guy playing at the Opera House. It was an amazing piano. Of course, I play a little bit of keyboards, you know, yeah. and I play basic. And I was like, oh, I don't think I even want to touch my keyboards again after that. I feel like giving up. <laughs> But everybody's so got their own voice. And everyone's yeah. as good as they are. We're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're all good at something, aren't we? We yeah, yeah. do the best that we can with it, really. Yeah. yeah. But the level is certainly like incredibly Amazing. high now. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. inspiring. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you were with, because um, you've probably been in a lot of bands, but I remember you being in Torch Songs as well with yeah. um, Wayne and um, yeah. Carol, Carol Story, Story and yeah. a few others. Yeah, Neil yeah. Reynolds. Yep. Was on it, wasn't Neil and, Reynolds. Um, yeah. Dave, maybe. Dave, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Grant Mason. Okay, yeah, mm. yeah. And so Natalia, uh, Natalia's story has been uh, singing in the band as well. Right. That's Carol's daughter. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So, you yeah, know, no, I did a lot of work with with, um, with that band. Yeah. Um, that was a band that I put together with Carol. Yeah. Started off just the two of us, then we had a Dave Maybe, and that's that started about 2000 or 2002, I think. So that band, that group of musicians are all good friends, and mm. we do occasional shows. And it's kind of jazzy, eh? Yeah, very much so, yeah. yeah. that's That was the crossover, really, for me. Right. That was a crossover band okay. where we moved from... Yeah, from from rock or pop, if you like, into into, into, into jazz. jazz. And, and do you sort of like pop, rock, pop more, or jazz, or you just think of them as Well, I mean, the, the, my favourite band at the moment is that I'm playing in is that is I know I play in all these other bands with Mitch Marsden and <laughs> the Narcs and all these people. But um, I love the Narcs. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but the band that I I get the biggest kick out of is the Blue Riders. But, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, I was yeah. coming to that band. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's it, because that, that band's playing all the stuff off my first two albums, which are all oh, which is all instrumental yeah. uh, jazz, mainly instrumental, but it's kind of electronica, it's electronica uh, jazz, so it's got samples and mm. it's very funky and um, and it's all original material, you know, and yeah. I use uh, lots of really good guests on, the, on that. Um, in fact, I'm just about to release an album, uh, release a single, just yeah. about to release a single with uh, Roger Fox right. called Caribbean Cruise, and that's kind of come out of that work workshopping the, that song with the, oh, with cool. the Blue Riders. Yeah, Without, yeah. So you're releasing it? Uh, well, it's going online. It's being released online on right. September the 17th, so Monday, right. next Monday. Okay, yeah, and yeah. What's, what's that one about? Um, well, that was based on a um, that that uh, it was based on a milk bar actually that I used to have at, at church. I used to go to a church corner in Christchurch when I was growing up. It was mm -hmm. called called the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and we used to walk past this dairy, and you know, milk bar that had a jukebox, but it, it had a big picture on the front of a palm tree and coconuts, you know, with the sea, classic sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And it was one of those places you just you dreamt about where that was, and mm -hmm. it looked like an exotic place far away that you would like. you'd like to go to. So, <laughs> so that's basically what that's about. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Caribbean Cruise is coming out in September and that's my latest sort of project. Oh, with, with Roger Look, Fox playing yeah. and also Steve Garden who runs Rebel Records which is the, the biggest kind of jazz label in the country. So yeah. it's quite a big project for me. It's, been, it's only one song. Oh, I look forward to hearing it. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah. 
Also, I've, I've seen you like you've done quite a bit of with Sarah Spice. I've told her recently yeah. in the last since you've been on the White Hand. Yeah. Yeah, and she, she's got a great voice. She's she? amazing. So, yeah. so does she record here? Is that yeah, how she's. Comes out? Yeah, she recorded a single called uh, Mr. Johnson here, a tribute to Robert Johnson, the great blues player. Okay. She recorded that right here, yeah, and we yeah. filmed the video actually in our lounge oh, next door. Okay. Yeah, so I've done that with a few artists here, uh, Dan Sharp and um, uh, a few other people. But uh, yeah, um, Spon uh, Sarah's incredible. Sarah yeah. Spice is an amazing singer. She was with, um, wasn't she on LJ Hooker's album or something, or someone like that? She was John, John Hooker. Yeah. John Lee, what he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And jo yeah, that's right. So, so she, she was living in San Francisco and. and, and Hooker, that's the real estate. Yeah, yeah. I've just realised. Oh, you know that one. Sorry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she she was in the blue scene in San Francisco. Yeah. And um, for quite a while, she's she's a, a real force to be re reckoned with as a singer and as a songwriter. Yeah. So she lives in Waihe here. So we do quite a bit of work together. Yeah. We haven't, haven't done anything for the last few months, but. Um, come okay. summer, we'll probably. Yeah. Her, she sings with the Blue Riders, and that's very, very special. Yes, I yeah, I saw that. We, we, we played at the Tauranga Arts Festival last year. And okay. Had a full house, and, and it was really amazing, actually, an amazing concert. Yeah. She, she did a uh, really cool video away with, um, that I saw a while back. I think it was on a sort of a western looking video or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, it was quite cool. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, she did a song here on the on the railway line between yeah. Waikiki and Waikiki. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, I love the cool. idea of working with local artists. That's yeah. to me is the best the best thing, you know. Yeah, it's good to get behind your local neighbourhood. Yeah, neighbourhood yeah. neighbourhood yeah. too, you know, being in the neighbourhood. Okay, yeah. so that brings me to my next question. Yeah. Why why he? <laughs> uh, well actually it's we had to get out of Christchurch because of the earthquakes. Of course, yeah. So um, part of it was about finding a place where it was affordable. <laughs> and the other thing was finding a place where it was um, central to a whole lot of different interests I've got. So living in Waihe was an, only an hour and a half from Auckland. So yeah, I had good, like Midge yeah. and, all, and all that yeah. Auckland whanau, music yeah. whanau up there. I've got a granddaughter, Sarah, as, as Zara, who's in, um, in Hamilton. Right. Um, I'm working on the Tauranga Jazz Festival and the Youth Jazz Competition. So that was... And then I've got the beaches. We've got the beaches right behind us. So why he's just a central, good central place to work out of. You know, and actually, plus I yeah. like really, I really like living rurally. I, right. I made that decision a while ago not to live in the city, mm. and it has really saved my life. I mean, I, I was in, in LA and in Sydney and a whole lot of places like that, and I really felt that I functioned best away from big cities. Mm. And because you can go to the city anytime, I'm only an hour mm. away at any stage from here. Mm. But I just love being here. I love the trees. I love the kiru and the and the fantails and the, the tuis and the, you know, the stream is just running right past the studio here. It's very special. Mm, so it is very so that's why, why here it's beautiful. I came here because it's beautiful. That's mm. why I came here. The only noise that you hear here are the dogs barking when you come to the house. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they're yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And we yeah. must get those on camera. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. I'm sure they'll perform for you. I'm sure yeah. they will. Yeah. We'll just drive away and come back. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then I just wonder if I was going to ask anything else. Um, oh, of course. Well, that's did I ask you studio? No, I didn't uh, really. Yeah. What are you doing with your studio? Uh, well, well I, I, I work in this space every day, really. And, yeah. and as I said, I'm, I've been, I, I work on, I'm picking my projects off. I mean, I had a lot of people asking me to work with them, and I, uh, a while ago I just had to say that I, I really want to focus on my own stuff because I've Fair got enough. so many tunes. And Fair enough. I'm a bit yeah. older now, and, and you feel time running out. You just want to. I know that feeling. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you just, you just want to get as much music done as you yeah. can, you know. So I um, spend, I'm spending a lot of time in here relearning piano things, um, writing lots of stuff and recording. So, um, so the studio is pretty busy and I have been, I've been collaborating with people like Dan Sharp, I might have mentioned him before, but he's a great young mm, songwriter yeah. from Taupo, he's amazing, a bit like John Mayer, he's fantastic. Oh, John Mayer's um, great. Yeah, so, and then Sarah, um, yep. and then my own stuff, we're recording here with the Blue Riders soon. Um, and it's just a really good room. This room mm. has got a special vibe about it that when people play here, good things happen, you know. Oh, cool. So the studio is kind of busy. I've got my own label, Torch Music. Yes. And yes, so I'm so, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an indie label. So I just keep releasing things, um, projects yeah. that I really like like working on, you know. There's who's a variety the most, of things. Who's the most famous person you've had in your studio? Here. Apart from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <Yeah>, mate. <laughs> I mean, all the narcs have been here. Midge has been here. Um, yeah. Brendan Dugan's been here, um, Tina Cross has been here, wow. I mean, I've had, I did a yeah. great recording with her a while ago. Um, so yeah, all sorts of musicians dropping in and out of here, but the, you mm. know, um, 
it's all they're all just people, they're all just so friends, really. Yeah, we're all growing up together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cup of tea, some material. You can normally have a drop on some. Yeah, point. yeah, that's no, good. It's good. great <laughs> to have you here. Yeah, 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 that's been great. Thanks. Mm. Um, that's probably pretty much it, I think. Now, unless you've got something that you want to talk about, your projects that you got, like you got a big project on the go at the moment that you're doing that you want to talk about, apart from what you talked about. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Well, I've, I've got a, a number of other projects coming forward. I mean, I'm just about to start into this. New, a new EP with Andy with 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 the rent with the Ryan Dixon line. Yeah. So that's going to be big. Um, I did an album last year that I released with John Wright, who's the cr yeah. the cricketer. He's the New Zealand cricket captain, but he's yeah. been over coaching Derbyshire and and he works up in India as well. But he's coming back, and we're looking at recording an EP with him too. I got so I got four songs on the go with him, and I've got two other tracks I want to record of my own that I want to get out so mm -hmm. before Christmas if I can. Mm -hmm. Unlikely, but I'd probably. Yeah. probably um, Probably happen, and so I've got about yeah. So I've got about eight or nine things. I work with Ellie Cook, the country singer. Oh yes, of course. So I'm maybe working on a project with yeah. her. She's asked me to work on an album with her. Yeah. So I just never quite know. This the Sal Westers is the band that I work with with her. So um, I'm working with a whole lot of different people, and those collaborations just go on and on. So, yeah. but I've definitely got a busy period coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Then it'll be Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> then it'll be 2019. I'm actually trying to teach myself um, Christmas carols on the ukulele, oh, so I can yeah. teach them to the kids at school. Oh, great. <laughs> what year that on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, 2019, in the summer of 2019, oh. we're on tour with the Narcs. In fact, we're just working on that this morning. Oh, lovely. So we're out on the road in oh, January, right. yeah. yeah. So Will you be playing in Tauranga? Uh, yes, I think we're playing Tartar Street. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. Did you come have a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Bring our camera along. Yeah, yeah we could. Yeah. Some live footage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't be pogoing this time though, it's a <laughs> yeah, bit old no. for that now. Could happen, could happen. <laughs> could happen. Mm. probably not. Mm. Anyway, thanks very much for spending no time for us. Nice yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, thank cool. you very much. And Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some dogs coming to say hello. Here they are. Here they are, Benji, Barney. Benji and Barney. Benji. So can you show us which one's Benji and which one's Barney? Um, this is Benji. Yeah. And this one here's Barney. Benji and Barney. <laughs> and they're characters. Clear with those dogs. When I come home late after a gig, they give me the most amazing welcome. Oh, very oh funny. they gave us one too, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> you good boys, eh? What you think we got Barney? They are um, half Maltese and they're uh, the cross Maltese with um, Tibetan, <laughs> Tibetan Spaniel. Wow. Yeah. They're, they're lovely dogs. They drive us mad sometimes, but they're rock and roll puppies. <laughs> <laughs>